excitement is palpable on Rocky Top. Basketball season is back, and for a 16th straight year, exhibition play between Carson Newman and Tennessee. We welcome you courtside alongside Tennessee legend Steve Hamer. I'm Michael Watchering. Happy you're with us. And Steve, I'm sure you're pumped about basketball season being back. Yeah, you're going to have to restrain me because I'm going <laughs> to get over this table and, and throw up a dunk or something. But I am really excited for the new era here at the Lady Balls and to see what Carson Newman's got as well. It is a new era for Tennessee. A new coach on the sideline, but a familiar face. Former Tennessee point guard, a three-time national champion in Kelly Harper. Hey, Kelly Harper, you know, it was great catching up with her. You know, we talked about this before, but we played during the era of dinosaur parking. So, you know, we're old school. We're tenacious. We go after it. Just catching up with her today and shoot around was fantastic. So, looking forward to see how she approaches this game and, and what she does. One of 11 women's basketball head coaches to take three different schools to an NCAA tournament. On the other side, Carson Newman has a veteran head coach in Mike Mincy. It's his ninth season at the helm, and he knows what this game is all about. He really does. You know, you got to come into this game with certain expectations. You know, he, he expects his team to come out and play well in a hostile environment. You know, they look up to these Lady Balls. They play against them. They watch them on television, and, 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 and coming out here into this atmosphere and playing them on the summit, as long as they don't give up 120 points, 130 points, I think he is going to be okay. Carson Newman is undersized, but they do have a pair of elite players at the Division II level in the South Atlantic Conference. Kayla Marisite, she's a guard, but averaged a double-double double last year, and Addison Bird, 12 points per game. Yeah, they're going to need them to do that and more. Uh, they're going to have to be very, very tenacious on the glass uh, as the Lady Balls. This is the biggest lineup the Lady Balls have ever had here at Rocky Top, so they're going to really have to be relentless in terms of blocking out, in terms of getting the shot that they want. There is Carson Newman starting five, a true freshman in the starting lineup for the first time since the 2015-16 campaign for Mike Mincy. That's Braylon Weichel. And then Tennessee on the other side. We weren't sure exactly who they were going to run out there, but we knew Renaya Davis would be in there right in the middle. couple returners, newcomer out there as well in, in Jaden McCoy. Yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting how they mix in Jaden McCoy. Um, you've got 47% of the scoring points from last year returning this year. So it's not exactly like the cupboard's bare. You know, they've got some talent here. they got some great All-Americans. It's just a matter of those girls gelling and pulling through. Let's see what happens here tonight. Exhibition play underway as Massengill pulls up for a seven-footer, misses it, and there's Tennessee's size right away. Well, right there, that's two offensive rebounds already. Well, Carson Newman's tallest player is Sidney Pierce at 6'3". Well, Tennessee averages 6'2". So rebounding's going to be critical. That's what Mike Mincy said before. They were out-rebounded by 41 last year. Yeah, you know, we talked about this before the game. We thought it was a, it was a typo. <laughs> they gave up 72 rebounds last year. And there's another offensive rebound and a stick back from Jaden McCoy, the local product, and a transfer from Northwest Florida State College. with a basketball. See how Carson Newman handles this length offensively. It's an elite scoring team for Carson Newman. Yeah, you know, one of the things that Carson Newman has to do is take your time. Don't settle for good shots. Instead, get a great shot. Griffin travels with it. Carson Newman turns it over. Carson Newman is over 80 points per game over the last three years. One of three D2 schools that have posted at least 80 points per game in that stretch. So they can pick it up and put it down. And let's see how they're able to handle this length of Tennessee. Yeah, that's the biggest issue right there. You know, you, you get you get the size and, and, and the girth and the tenacity of the Lady Balls on this end, and all they're going to do is they're just going to pound it into the paint. And it's going to be a matter of how long can Carson Newman stay in this man-to-man. -man. They're going to have to zone it up initially. Well, Mike Mincy said that he wanted to get rid of turnovers. 19 or less would be a win for him. They've turned it over once already. Kushkidawa underneath. Thanks one in. That's big for Tennessee. They need her to really play well. She started last season well, but then got hurt. Yeah, they need her to really, really turn it up even more this season. Kayla Marisites, left wing. Now the freshman, Braylon Weichel. Tough for Carson Newman to find some open lanes against this length. Well, you know, sometimes you're going to have to take that first good look. Sidney Pierce had a great look, about 15 foot, and passed it up. Heard with a running scoop layup, too strong, and Kushkidawa with the board. Tennessee out-rebounding Carson Newman here early, 4-0. That's a 
terrific move by Zay Green behind the back. Didn't go below the free throw line, let the other players fill the paint, and gave her an open look. Green averaged 10 points per game last year, an all freshman team pick in the SEC. It's all Tennessee early, the first six points of the night. Carson Newman struggling to get into that offensive set, and now a little body check by Renaya Davis as you take a look at what Zay Green just did, running the floor, finding a good shot. Well, look at where Zay Green stops right here. She stopped right about that 15-foot marker just to make sure that there's a passing lane, and she didn't have one, and she did her. She took her time and knocked down a great jump shot. And that's what you want to see from Zay Green, who's now a sophomore for Tennessee. Get those turnovers under control. And with the youth and inexperience on the Lady Balls team, I mean, she's she's got a lot of experience, even though she's just a sophomore. Bird puts up another jumper. This one rattles around the cage, and a foul will be whistled. I believe this goes on Carson Newman. And it goes on Kayla Marisai. So three fouls on Carson Newman here at the outset. Coach Mincy's he's got to be okay with that. You know, she's battling for the board. She didn't stop and just assume that the Lady Balls were going to get that. So he's got to be okay with that. And he talked about earlier, too, he thinks this team can be more physical than some of the teams he's had the last couple of years. Maybe not so much in this particular matchup because the Lady Balls are so big, but throughout the course of their regular season, yeah, they, they're going to have to be very, very aggressive on the defensive end because that defense will turn over into offense. They can score at, a, at an exceedingly high clip. Well, if you're Tennessee on the other side, you've, you've had some some scrimmages. You, you went overseas and played in Europe back in August. What are you trying to get out of a game like this? I think you want to get everyone into a routine. You know, we talked about this earlier. Um, watching, uh, watching coaches shoot around, she is particularly detail-oriented. So she wants to run some clean sets, get no injuries, and have everybody get some playing time. Mara Seitz gets her shot blocked by Kushkidawa. And here comes Tennessee leaking out. Two on one. Davis, the give and go from Green, and she sticks it in reverse layup. Running the floor. What the Lady Balls have to hang their hat on. They've got to be able to run the floor and kind of push the tempo this year. They've scored the game's first eight points in the first three minutes of this exhibition contest. Carson Newman looking to break the seal, and it's Kelsey Marisites for a three that rolls around the rim and drops off. It's a good look for Kelsey, though. It's a good clean look. Carson Newman had a lot of those last year, missed him as Jaden McCoy is fouled. Tennessee pushing it inside early. But when you go to the land of the Giants, you have to expect that this is going to happen. And that's just a fast break starter right there. And Carson Newman can't be slow footed and get back. You can't gamble because it's going to lead to a layup. Look like you back in the day starting those fast breaks with yeah. a shot block. <laughs> yeah. I'd still be on the other end. <laughs> oh, when you got good players, you don't have to run down the floor, right? You just let them do the layup. <laughs> Tennessee with the first 10. Jaden McCoy looks solid. Weren't sure who Coach Kelly Harper would start. And you have to like what she's seen from this starting five. You mentioned the meticulousness. She was working on the sideline with celebrations. Yes. With substitution patterns, how the team should high five. As Tori Griffin airballs a three-pointer. But I, I don't think I've ever seen that, even going back to, like, third or fourth grade basketball. Did you ever practice stuff like that? I never practiced it. But, you know, when you have a coach who's, who's new to a program, who has been here before, who's got such big shoes to fill, you want to make sure you do things the right way to honor the legends that come before you. And, and I think Coach Harper did a wonderful job of getting her team. Look, this is the way we're going to handle our business. If she gets Tennessee to the NCAA tournament, she'd be one of two coaches all time. to take four different schools there. She has had a great deal of success every stop. Kushkita underneath gets stuffed by Pierce. Green gets another good look, though, misses it. And then Davis on the glass. She averaged 15 and 8 last year, and she should be the star of this Tennessee team. I, with her athleticism, I mean, just the way she leaps to the basket, you know, she should be the go to player for the Lady Balls this year. Deep jumper from Griffin's too strong. Well, Carson Newman's had some good looks, but they're 0 for 4 from the field. I think a bit of it's nerves right now. It's nerves. Uh, you know, Coach Mincy wanted to see how his girls would come out here and react under the bright lights. And right now, they're just nervous. They just need something to go down. 
Inside, Jaden McCoy misses the initial attempt, taps it back up, misses that one, and Green steps out of bounds. Well, I think that Carson Newman is controlling a little bit of the tempo, but they just can't quite corral the glass. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're being rebounded, obviously, but you look at this. Good body, might have gotten hacked on the arm, but again, chance after chance, Renan Davis just skies up to get the rebound. Not a whole lot Carson Newman can do about that. Already a 12-1 lead on the glass is Braylon Weichel, the true freshman, breaks the seal with the first bucket of the game for CN. Good for Braylon. That's a confidence booster right there. That's a great confidence booster. Well, Braylon Weichel was an elite scorer in high school, put up nearly 2,500 points. But Zay Green quickly the other way, hands another jumper. She's got four. Well, she stepped into that jump shot, just calm, cool, and collected. Tennessee's subs starting to make their way to the scorer's table. Coach Harper said that they were going to script how they were going to play things. Team look in the corner. Kayla Maris sights and CN's made back-to-back -back jumpers. They can hit from deep at any time, and if they get clean looks like that, it can cause issues as Kelly Harper wants to call for time, and she immediately looks at Coach Gittawa wanting an answer. But Kelly Harper's debut halfway through, and it's Tennessee on top. Zay Green among the leaders back for Tennessee. She averaged double figures in SEC play last year. Lots going to be relying on her this season. Yeah, you know, they're really going to count on her because they're, they're still a young, young basketball team, and they need her leadership. They need her to step forward and take on that role of being the go-to person. You know, you, you got Juwan Jennings on the Tennessee football team. That's that alpha dog. You need someone for the Lady Balls to step up and say, look, this is my team. I will take control. Well, Renaya Davis is one of those as well. She's talked about wanting to become more of a vocal leader. Well, you know, if you're not vocal in the first place, that's challenging to get to, but it's nice to know that a junior wants to step up and be a little more vocal this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a must. It's a must when you got so many things that are brand new. Brand new coaching staff, brand new strength and conditioning, brand new way you come out on the floor. You know, you've got to make sure that you set that brand new sense of normalcy right away, and I think she can do that. Well, Tennessee finished last season 19 and 13, 7 and 8 in league play, and we get a look at a player that we think is going to be one of the best in a long time for Tennessee, and that's Jordan Horston, who had the ball and just passed it. Yeah, you know, what, what can you say about her? Much ballyhoo. You, you, you look at her, she was MVPs of all-star games coming out of high school, so I think the Lady Balls are really going to count on her to be a scorer. Well, you see her slick skills there. She misses the initial attempt, misses a second attempt. Ray Burrell gets another chance, and second chance points. Now six of them for Tennessee. Yeah, you know, they're, they're out rebounding on the offensive glass. Is at 14-1 to one now. You know, that, that's, that's something that Carson Newman's really going to have to do. They may have to go to a zone, but they're really going to have to do something to combat that size. Carson Newman had made three pointers on back to back offers, but now here's Horston again. She goes coast to coast with a right hand layup and misses another fairly easy attempt. But, uh, you know, she's a freshman. She's really talented. These aren't going to happen very often in her career. Sometimes your first buck is the hardest to get. <laughs> you know, the, the ceiling, she's had point blank opportunities. The, 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 there's a, uh, something on the, there's a lid on the basket right now, so she just needs to get the lid off and she'll be fine. Number two overall player by ESPNW coming out of high school in Columbus, Ohio. Inside on a right-hand hook shot attempt by Key, misses short. Carson Newman's done a fairly nice job defensively, but just struggling here at the offensive end. Well, you look at the fact for the Lady Balls, they had all the length that came off of the floor. Now, all of a sudden, you bring in even <laughs> more length. Well, I think Carson Newman and, and whoever's playing man-to-man -man defense is looking at Jesse Rainey, who's 5'8", and saying, oh, thank goodness, I get somebody that's not 6'2". Horston running the point guard spot. She'll be one of the three that'll run that position throughout the year. Ball goes inside for Burrell, and she dribbles it off of the foot. A right foot, and it's a turnover for Tennessee. Well, Carson Newman's two of eight from the floor. Tennessee seven of 18, but those second chance points really helping the cause. Yeah, that's the difference of the game right now. Kelsey.
see Mara Seitz cashes in a three from the right wing. Lady Eagles within seven. Orson likes to push the tempo here, but so far Tennessee hasn't been able to get anything to fall. Rennie wants a triple. She's too strong. An Australian won a two on this roster. Another offensive rebound. And Burrell scoops it in. Well, she's a player that showed glimpses at times last year. Played all 32 games. You'd like to see her maybe take that next step. Yeah, you definitely want to see that consistency from Ray. You know, that was a good left-handed drive to the basket. Good, strong drive. You want to see that all the time. Burrell averaged four points last season, but was a quality role player, averaging 13 minutes a night. Parasites is stuff. And it's last touched. I believe by Carson Newman. Here's another look at it. Yeah, that's good help side defense. Plant your feet right there outside of that restricted circle. Really didn't have to jump to block that shot. Yeah, Tamari Keat, she's six foot five. Number nine post player in last year's recruiting class from Cary, North Carolina. And she's got that look that she could be another one of those great post players for Tennessee. She could be. You can tell that she looks young, you know, a little intimidated right now, but once she gets her feet under her, gets some playing time, gets some experience, I mean, she's going to she's gonna be great for the Lady Vols. Well, this is just a phenomenal atmosphere here at Thompson Bowling Arena. They've led the country in attendance 19 of the last 28 years. So when you play here, it doesn't matter if you're wearing the home team or the road team. It's a nerve-wracking environment. Very much so. Very much so. I mean, this is a great crowd on a school night here, mm -hmm. opening night for the Lady Vols. Still a great crowd here. Burrell scoops it another. She's being aggressive here early for Tennessee. Yeah. Lady Vols getting a lot of what they want offensively. And leading by 11. Harley Smith, a freshman, is fouled by Rennie. Let's take another look at that Burrell bucket. And very smooth. This is the potential that she has. Yeah, absolutely. You, you passed up a good shot to get a great shot. You know, don't settle for the outside jumper when you can easily get to the basket and put it in. Kayla Marisites wants another three. That's too strong. And the size of Horston corrals the board. Average eight rebounds a game in high school. Horston throws it inside. There's Key. Nice left hand hook shot and a foul will be whistled. And it's going to go on Carson Newman on a po on a uh, block out. And I'm sure if you're the Lady Eagles, you're saying, we finally get a rebound and you're going to call a foul here? <laughs> I think they called it on the way up, though. So. But, I, you know, that's a great job of establishing early post position. She banked in the free throw. So, you know, a little nerves play into that. But she established early post position. Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, the SEC Nation traveling pregame show will be in Jacksonville for a top 10 matchup. 10th ranked Georgia and 7th ranked Florida with Marty, Marcus, Paul, and Tim as they break down everything from the gridiron to the grill for week 10 of the college football season. SEC Nation is presented by Aflac right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Well, Tennessee's ahead by 13. Carson Newman's finally been able to make some shots, but still looking for double figures. Wilson pulls the trigger. Lady Eagles settling for a lot of jumpers. Nine of their 12 attempts have come from long range. Yeah, and, and you know, sometimes, again, your first look is your best look. You know, I know that we talked to Coach Mincy before about taking the shot clock all the way down and then getting into a really good shot, the best shot you can take. But sometimes, man, with the, the pressure of the Lady Ball, the size, the, the length, you got to take those first shots. Well, Curse Newman's out of the Division II ranks. They're an excellent shooting team. Last season, they averaged 80-plus points per game, and they were one of the best free field goal percentage teams in the nation, top 50 in the nation in that category. So it's a team that can absolutely score, but in this environment, they're not going to see anything like this once they start the regular year. Yeah, everything's going to be much easier after this. I think Mike Mincy joked that he's going to see more 6'2 players or taller tonight than he will the rest of the year and maybe the next two years combined. Taylor Goforth pulls up for a jump shot, and that's too strong. One of the things I like that Carson Newman's doing on offense is they're setting a lot of perimeter screens, and they're forcing the Lady Vols to play good perimeter defense. Horston too strong. 
And the rebound to Key, who goes over the back of Caroline Harville. And Carson Newman, I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. If you have that kind of size differential and there's not going to be a foul, nothing you can do. No, you look at Coach Mincy on the sideline there. He's just shaking his head and saying, what can you do? Good help defense from Horston, and the bench really like that. Here's the razzle-dazzle from Tennessee. Rennie trying to complete it. Misses the jumper short. Good board by CN, and Lady Eagles will ignite the offense, and they can play for the final shot. Harville, a short jumper, is an air ball. Horston, another good block out. Been impressed with her defense. Been very impressed with her defense. Again, I mean, she's, she's long, she's athletic, she can move, she's quick. Five seconds, she pulls the trigger from three. That's too strong, and that is how the first quarter will come to a close. I think both sides have to be happy with some things, upset with maybe a few others, but Tennessee controls the glass 23 to 4 in the first quarter, and they lead by 17 at the break. Ten minutes in the books in an exhibition game, and it's Tennessee out in front thanks to second chance points. Twelve of them for the Lady Vols as they lead by 17 against the Carson Newman team who's had a really quality run, 20 win seasons each of the last three years. Got back to the NCAA tournament last season, but a couple key departures and really three overall. They lost three really good scores that put up a lot of points. Yeah, you know, when you lose those type of experienced basketball players that can put the ball in the hoop, it's, it's it's, it's detrimental to the next year's team. So, you know, Coach Mincy did not forget how to coach, didn't forget how to recruit. They're going to be just fine. Horston with a steal. Her defense igniting offense, and Horston with a right hand scoop layup. Yeah, she's talented. She's very talented. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Horston, a McDonald's All-American, was the MVP of that game coming out of Columbus, Ohio. Braylon Michael pulls the trigger on a jumper and a soft touch for her. The freshman looking nice. Hey, that's a good set right there. They forced the top screen on the elbow, and the Lady Vols center played underneath the screen, leaving the guard wide open for the shot. Well, it's been much more of a half-court game than last year's game was, a run and gun a year ago. Orson now in there with some of the starters, a little bit of a change in rotation. I think this is what Kelly Harper wanted to do. Yeah, you know, Carson Newman gave up 121, 20, 128 points last year to be exact. You know, the Lady Balls were on pace after that first quarter to score 104. So, you know, you got to you got to be happy about certain things if you're Carson Newman. They're running their sets. Been a little frustrating at times, but they've gotten some pretty good looks. Look for a high post screen here momentarily and see if the Lady Balls will go underneath that screen. You got to go with what worked last time. Let's take a look at what Carson Newman did the last time around. This now, was this that good screen. Offense. It's a good solid screen there, and the Lady Vol center is not even in the picture. She went underneath the screen, leaving a wide open shot. I think you got to do that more. You know that'll be something Kelly Harper will talk about in film study. A step up, hedge a little bit harder. Well, use the Lady Vol size against them. Tennessee with his different look. A couple starters, at least from this game, on the floor. Good high-low set inside for Kushkidawa. She's stuffed by Sydney Pierce. Good block by Sydney Pierce. Killed her ground. She's got a couple of them. Confidence gaining for the sophomore. Now let's see if it leads to any offense this time around for Carson Newman. Here comes a high post screen here. She rejected the screen. Dribble handoff here. I think you have to. There's another good high post screen. Shot clock up against it, and Carson Newman gets a layup attempt from Chandler Gear, but she overshoots it. A little too late in the shot clock, and Davis running the length of the court to get an easy layup. But if you're Coach Mincy, you've got to be happy with that offense. You know, ball reversal, making the Lady Balls play defense, and you're getting some decent looks. Tennessee now up to over 40% shooting. Ahead by 19 in this exhibition affair. Trying to use Pierce as that screen. Six on the shot clock. Carson Newman putting up against it again. A little step up and under jumpers too strong. And Davis with another rebound. Tennessee racking him up early. Yeah, decent look, decent look. Now they just got to get back and play defense. 
and they secure another rebound. So just one trip, one shot opportunities here lately as Mike Mincy burns the timeout. Well, Coach, Har Coach Harper's not going to be happy about that because you only had one lady ball within the orange. When you're used to crashing that glass, you can get any rebound you want to, so why stay outside of the arc? Tennessee shooting 39%, but they're plus 20 on the glass, ahead by 19. Saturday, we'll have another full slate of college football right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. We kick the day off at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, with Texas A&M hosting UTSA in College Station. Then it's Mississippi State taking on Arkansas in Fayetteville. And Vandy is in Columbia to cap off the day against South Carolina at 7.30 Eastern in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Tennessee and Carson Newman in the exhibition game. They played it now 16 consecutive years, and as you would expect, all Tennessee, but Carson Newman showing well despite the 19-point uh, differential in this one, and now we see a little zone here from Tennessee. Well, I think you're getting exactly what you want to see if you're Coach Mincy. The girls settling in, knocking down some shots, running their sets, forcing the Lady Balls to play good defense. Addison Bird loses her feet, and I think this is what's going to be interesting about Kelly Harper's team this year. How many different sets do they run? Do they press? Do they zone? Do they do stuff like that? Out of a timeout, come out maybe a 1-3-1, a 2-3 kind of look. Absolutely. There are so many different things that you have to think about. You know, she talked earlier in the shoot-around about having her, her rotation scripted. How long will she stick with that? You know, will, will that happen for the beginning part of the season, or is that something that's going to, you know, uh, transpire throughout the season? One thing that caught my ear when we were talking to her, Addison Bird from the left corner, too strong on that jumper. I asked her, is this team that we're going to see tonight going to be vastly different than the team that we see in February? And it wasn't a yes. It was a we absolutely better be because that's been her history. She said typically the team that you see in February and March is significantly better by that point in the year. Well, you look at where she came from last year and the type of start that they had to, to begin the season. I believe they were one in seven. Uh, and finished up unbelievably well, went to the Sweet 16 of the tournament, and just got better as the year went along. So you expect that from, from Kelly Harper. Yeah, Kelly Harper at Missouri State last year. They started the year 1-7, finished 24-3. and three. Got an 11 seed in the NCAA tournament and then went to the Sweet 16. They eventually lost to sixth-ranked Stanford in that game. But it was a terrific season and a ter terrific close to the year for Missouri State. Absolutely. You know, she's done it before. Uh, you expect this Lady Falls team to get better and better as the season goes along. Eight on the shot clock here for Carson Newman. Lou Brown out there defensively doing a great job. Three on the shot clock. Lady Eagles have to chuck it up there. And Brown, how about that? She's a sixth-year player, a transfer from Washington State, hasn't played in almost two years, and she makes an impact defensively. Absolutely. You know, she's wearing that big, bulky brace, but, you know, her lateral quickness is going to get better as the season goes along. So she pokes the ball out, goes out on the perimeter, 30 feet from the basket, and gets a block shot. She said that she's feeling fit and strong. She's ready to play, and she was one of the emotional leaders last season, even though she didn't get a chance to get on the floor, but that speaks to who she is as a person and as a player and somebody that could be key for a Tennessee team looking for that leader. Absolutely. You know, she's a, she's definitely a veteran her sixth year, so she can really rally the troops when things go south and get them settled back in to make sure that they play Lady Ball basketball. First team. Burrell back to the free throw line. She showed well so far. Burrell three for three from the floor, eight points. And looking to be the first player in a double figures here tonight. She was just a 57% foul shooter last year, but looked nice on that first one. You know, there should be no reason that she's a 57% foul shooter because of the stroke that she's got. You know, she's got great, great follow through. And, and it's just confidence. It's, you know, that's all it boils down to, just confidence. Carson Newman at the other end. They've hit a couple three-pointers, but that's pretty much been all they've been able to muster in the offense. Get a lot of double teams here as Bird step through. And Tennessee steps out of bounds, hustling for the basketball, but I think you got to like the hustle if you're Tennessee. You really do. 
and again, you know, you, you go down to the land of the trees and you're going to get that rejected every single time. I like when Carson Newman gets the ball out on the perimeter and sets some ball-to-ball screens, use some big for small screens, and makes the Lady Ball bigs move. They should be able to take advantage of that. Lou Brown, again, stepping in the passing lane, getting a deflection, and getting the ball back for her side. Nine turnovers for Carson Newman midway through the second stanza. Rennie wants another jumper. A little flat-footed, but rattles that one out. And then Key will be called for a foul. Good box out. That's a very, very good box out by Sidney Pierce. Tennessee hasn't made a field goal in over three minutes. But Carson Newman's in a scoring drought that has lasted nearly five minutes. Last bucket for CN came at the 920 mark of this quarter. And it came from Braylon Weichel, who scoots down the lane and rolls one in. How about a freshman? She feels confident in this atmosphere. Hey, there's nothing wrong with her going in. She's not afraid. What does she have to be afraid of? She's the younger sister of Ashton Weichel, who had played here for four years. So maybe she came to some of those games as a fan and knew what to expect. Brown misses inside. Then she tumbles to the deck as Weichel takes it away. Curse Newman looking to run and gun. And a traveling violation. It was blocked anyway. Yeah, just got a little too happy. But you look at this. I mean, you, you, you use the screen, and you're able to use that off-handed, left-handed scoop shot for the layup. That's a great job of getting to the basket. If you're going to do that in this gym, once he gets to the D2 ranks, he's going to be doing that a lot. Tennessee with a basketball, ahead by 19. Pretty much been their lead for the majority of this second quarter. As Pierce with another block. She's got three of them underneath. That's a great block. Carson Newman will set up the offense. Marisites wants a triple. That's too strong. Kayla Marisites, the team's leading returning scorer, one for six. Massengill dumping it underneath, and Lou Brown will get the benefit of that one, scooping in a reverse layup and matching the largest lead of the game for Tennessee. Good for Lou. That's good for Lou. You know, she's rusty, too. You know, she hadn't played in a while, came in, tore ACL before she ever got to play a second for the Lady Balls. So if, if anyone wants to get out here and really please its crowd and please Coach Harper, it's Lou. Harley Smith wants a three. That's too strong. Yeah, Lou Brown last played in 2017-18. And she averaged 6.6 .6 rebounds at Washington State. That's a great in-and-out dribble to find a wide-open Lou Brown underneath the basket. So Brown has her team ahead by 21 points. Carson Newman won for its last eight from the field, shooting just 22%. Tennessee getting a lot of second chance opportunities. Turnover again from Lady Balls. They have five of them. Yeah, another freshman there. Emily Saunders not ready for the pass. Go forth, dumps it inside for Pierce, and Emily Saunders called for the foul. Freshman from Mullins, West Virginia. That's youth and inexperience, though. You know, you, 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 you're, the lights are bright again. You want to go down. You want to settle into the game. And the first thing you know, somebody gives you a tough pass. You fumble it, and then you compound it on the other end. Burrell takes it out of the hands of Goforth and then has it stripped by Goforth. So tit for tat there. But Tennessee basketball on the baseline. You know, that's good defense by Carson Newman to poke that out. That's great defense. One of the things that you want to see right here is if she would jump stop right there. Instead of going straight up, if she jump stop and power it up off of two feet, there's no way that she could get to her. Or use your backside and then extend with the right hand a Correct. little bit. Deep jumper from Burrell. She's feeling it right now. Ray Burrell's four for four and has a game high 12. Playing well. Just a shade over two minutes to go in the opening half, and it's all Tennessee. Go forth, stopping and popping, too strong. And the rebound ricochets out of bounds off of Massengill. Hey, I really like the way Sydney plays. Sydney Pierce, she really plays tough. She's played virtually this whole first half, and she's aggressive. You know, she's tipping balls out and, and blocking shots, so she is a very heady, very experienced basketball player. 16 minutes tonight, she averaged all of 10 last season. Another high screen. Madison Bunch, a deep triple. That's too strong. Loose basketball picked up by Goforth, and we'll get our first jump ball and a tie-up. 
goes to Tennessee, but I think if you're Mike Mincy, you have to be pretty happy with how your team is hustling right now. Absolutely. you got to be happy with that. you got to take some victories here and there, and I think at halftime, he will go in and gather the troops and let them know, hey, this is a pretty good first half of basketball you played. We didn't knock down as many shots as we wanted to, but hey, the Lady Vols have 36 points with about a minute and a half left in the first half. And you've held them to just 10 in the second quarter despite your team just scoring four. Let's see if Tennessee has a run in them here before the break. Masson Gill gets fouled on the way up and she'll take two shots. Like the aggressiveness by Masson Gill. Well, here's the question that I have. Masson Gill, 53% free throw shooter. It wasn't a great outside shooting team for Tennessee. Do they have to be better this season, or can they pound it inside? No, I think they got to be better. I really do. You know, most of the teams in the conference that they're going to play in in the SEC, the South Carolinas, the Kentuckys, the Texas A&Ms, they're going to pack in the defense. They're going to play a 2-3 zone, and they're going to force you to knock down the outside jumpers. Tennessee in league play last year shot under 30% from three-point range. I think they have to find a little more consistency from that distance. Gear bounces it out wide, but it's intercepted, and Burrell with a slick move. Three on two if they hustle. Burrell, a little scoop shot. She goes tumbling to the deck. Bodies on the ground. It's good defense by Carson Newman. Now Harful, 15-foot left baseline jump shots and air ball. Rennie with a buck with the rebound. She had Burrell, but will hold it as we get to the final minute of the first half. Yeah, that's one of those times where you catch that ball off of an air ball and you immediately look up the floor. Well, Carson Newman doing a better job on the glass as well. They're still getting out rebounded by almost a two to one margin, but that was at one point plus 21 on the glass. So they've been a little bit better on the on the cylinder lately. And I think you, if, if you're Coach Mincy as well, you got to be happy that the Lady Vols are not leaking out and getting easy baskets in transition. Abby Wilson gets a steal, but promptly steps on the baseline. I think for Tennessee, they're still feeling out exactly who the five on the floor are going to be, what rotations you're going to get. You talked about how meticulous Kelly Harper was, and I, I can only imagine the Excel spreadsheet that she had opened up with the different options that she could put out there at any time. Yeah, you know, when you have a team that is looking to you to be assertive, that's looking for direction, you really have to be detail-oriented. You really have to be meticulous, and I think she is the right lady for this job. Former Tennessee Lady Vol in her own right. And she's mentioned it. She always thought this would be Pat, Pat Summit's job. She never envisioned a world where she would be standing on that sideline. Actually talked about how she originally thought she was going to be a math teacher. She was going to coach high school sports. And then once she got to college, she started to think maybe college coaching is what I wanted to do. And she's been a really good one. Yeah, good for her. You know, to, to be able to look at the name on this floor, mm -hmm. the summit, named after the person in you know, some would, would argue all of basketball, not just women's basketball, but Coach Summit was the person in all of basketball. <laughs> now you're sitting in Coach Summit's seat and following in those shoes. You know, that's a lot of pressure. It really is. We all know that, and the expe expectations are high. And I think that she's, again, the lady to, to take this program over and to take them to higher heights. Well, Tennessee last season, 19 and 13. It ended a 42-year stretch where they had at least 20 win seasons. It hadn't happened since 1975-76 when they went 16 and 11. So even despite an NCAA tournament trip and what they were able to accomplish as a team last year, like you said, the expectations are sky high. Expectations are raised banners here inside of this facility, but, but Kelly Harper was a player. She played four years here, won three national championships with some great players, and now playing here for Tennessee inside of this big time arena. I think she's ready for this opportunity, and I hope, and we talked about this before, I hope she was able to take that moment and really grasp what this job means uh, to her and her family. Yeah, I, you know, the, the, the moment is definitely not too big for her. She's played on the largest stage stages. She's won multiple national championships. So the moment's definitely not too big for her. 
So back to play after the timing issue. The clock kept running after the inbounds pass. And Curtis Newman tips that ball out of bounds. Still nine on the shot clock here for Tennessee. In a, in a low scoring affair, Tennessee's actually been a team that has scored over 100 points against Curtis Newman an awful lot. 12 of the last 15. Yeah, they, they have a drought right now. And again, this, if you're the Lady Falls, or who knocks down the shots? Who do you, who's your go-to player right now? And they're finding themselves right now. Well, you look at Burrell. She's 12 points, 4 of 5. Renaya Davis, 6 points, 3 of 5. But the rest of the team outside of those two players, 7 for 30. So they need somebody else to step up as they go to a zone defense in the final half minute. Well, I guarantee you, if you were to have asked Coach Mincy before the game, would you take giving up 36 <laughs> points on the summit to the Lady Vols? He said, yeah, in a heartbeat. It's a Carson Newman team last year that gave up 70 points per game. They were 216th in the country in that category. Obviously, a lot of that plays into their, their pace. One of the best scoring teams in the nation last year, but doing a pretty good job defensively, but they haven't scored in over four minutes. Well, this is what the Lady Vols have to do. It's, it's inside-out basketball, especially when the perimeter shots aren't falling. Get the ball inside. Let them go to work. But they got to knock down the shots. McCoy misses the jumper, and that puts an end to the first half. So, Kirsten Newman goes the final four and a half minutes without points. But Tennessee finishes the opening half two of its last 11. So, after 20 minutes, what's your biggest takeaway? How do you explain if people are just tuning in now the score differential? I think people, if they're just tuning in now, will look at the situation and go, it's her first basketball, you know, coaching game here at the University of Tennessee. She's got a script in terms of when people are going to play, where they're going to play in certain spots, and it's just going to take some time. It's going to take some time. You know, they need to gel. They need to mesh. You know, hopefully by the end of the season, they're going to be a lot better. And then it's very evenly distributed for Tennessee as they utilize 12 second chance points. They dominate the paint against Carson Newman 24 to 4, and they lead 36 13 in Kelly Harper's Tennessee coaching debut. Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, the SEC Nation traveling pregame show will be in Jacksonville for 10th ranked Georgia and number seven Florida with Marty, Marcus, Paul, and Tim as they break down everything from the gridiron to the grill for week 10 of the college football season. SEC Nation is presented by Aflac right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Back inside the Thompson Bowling Arena with Steve Hamer. I'm Michael Watring and Steve, uh, a nice first half overall, but I think both teams feel like maybe they need to kick it into gear maybe a little bit here in the second half. Yeah, much like a boxing match, you know, you just kind of feel each other out and who's going to really put the foot on the gas and really take it up another notch. You know, if you're the Lady Falls, you like the fast start that you got off to. You scored 26 points in the first quarter. You were hitting the offensive glass, but then the second quarter happened and they went through one of those droughts that they've had in the last couple of years where they couldn't score and you only scored 10 points now you limited Carson Newman to four points but what's going to happen when you get into SEC play and you're scoring 10 points a quarter it's going to be tough well Tennessee has two standouts one you would expect in Renaya Davis and another you wouldn't in Ray Burrell yeah you know Ray Burrell you know she comes into the game, you're looking at Renaya here, she does what she does because she gets up and down the floor, she's in transition, she's long, but then when you have Ray come in as well to add another in that one-two punch on the offensive glass, sprinting up and down the floor, finishing with her off hand, it's a really good one-two punch. But again, can you do it consistently? Can you have that on a night-in and night-out basis? Well, you would expect Tennessee to be controlling the glass tallest team in program history, but outside shooting, not great. 0 for 7 from deep, uh, but a lot of paint points so far. I think they'd like to be a little more efficient in the second half. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you, you look at the situation and you, you look at the Lady Vols. They're, they haven't shot the ball well beyond the arc uh, last year. That just tells me, maybe I'm a little bit selfish, maybe I'm seven feet tall, you want to get the ball to the post. That just tells me to get the ball inside, start inside out. 
have been a much better shooting team when they do get the ball inside. They've controlled the glass, and Carson Newman will get the ball. They scored just four points in the second quarter. Bird with an open look to start things off. That's probably not what Kelly Harper would have liked to see defensively. But a rebound, and here comes Tennessee leaking out. Kushkidawa bangs a jumper too strong, and there's Ray Burrell. She gets the start in the second half. Average just four points per game last year, but put up a dozen in the first 20 minutes tonight. I think if you're the Lady Balls, you got to speed up Carson Newman right now. You really got to get them to an up and down pace game. Take them out of their element. Make sure that you take some good shots, maybe the first look, but get the ball up and down the floor if you're Coach Harper right now. Well, Carson Newman's turned it over 13 times. Tennessee only has eight points off of those giveaways, so they aren't necessarily taking advantage of some of those run and gun situations. Burrell thought about pulling the trigger on another jumper. Set dribbles in and gets a nice lift. So that's what you like to see. Pass like to the see jumper that. and get an easy lift. Yeah, oh. started inside out. You got a good post feed. You passed it back out and knocked down a great shot. Been a frustrating opening 20 minutes for Carson Newman's offense against this very long and tall Tennessee defense. Marisites, the deep jumper. That's too strong. And another rebound for Davis. Let's see if Tennessee will run here. Three on three. Burrell, three-pointers on the way. That one toilet bowls out. And there's Davis on the glass. Not bad from Tennessee. They get a good initial look, and then the offensive glass. Well, they did one of the things that we talked about. They're really pushing the ball up the floor. Took a quick outside jumper, but Renan Davis is right there to tip the ball to herself and get a layup. Bird, a deep three-pointer. She cans that one. Bird, 37% from deep a year ago, connects on that one for CN, and that's where Carson Newman's gotten five of its seven field goals. That was pure all the way. Now they got a chance to run. Both teams now looking to be a little more aggressive here. Griffin, a deep jump shot that toilet pulls out. A very helter-skelter to begin the second half. Green can't put it in, but does draw the foul. So I think message loud and clear by Carson Newman, able to get a good look on the this end of the floor. Well, look at her feet right there. Feet are set, hands are ready to catch the ball right into the shooting motion. You got to get it off quick because you got size coming at you. Did a great job. Bird an honorable mention all league pick a year ago for Carson Newman, but it's Green at the free throw line. She was a freshman, all freshman team pick last year for this Tennessee club. You see that second note, former Tennessee legend Tamika Catchings. Same high school for Green. Look for the press here. First time tonight we've seen this. Nearly a turnover, but Carson Newman is able to break it. Parasites, a deep jump shot. That's too strong. And Kayla is one for eight from the floor. Now you got to get out and run. You forced a quick shot by Carson Newman. Get the ball in the post here. Kushkita was wide open. Instead, they settle for a deep jump shot. He can't get the rebound. Kushkita was wide open underneath yeah. the bucket. More youth and inexperience in the post there. You know, if you're a post player, you got to at least face the basket. You got to turn, face the basket, make the defense play honest. Well, Carson Newman's a little more aggressive shooting their shots. Senior Tory Griffin deposits that one. And Tennessee with a commanding lead, but both sides looking to be a little more up tempo. Quick ball movement, push Kittawa. She just, because Kittawa had the cardinal sin of post position right there. She she committed it by dribbling the ball in the same spot. Didn't, never face the basket. Turned and faced the basket, then put the ball on the floor. Useless dribbles. Didn't get her anywhere. Sydney Pierce with another block. She's done a nice job in the post. Parasites. Griffin off of another screen. Stop, pop, can it. Yeah, we're going to go back and take a look at that. You know, one of the things that we talked about before, the Lady Vols, their lateral quickness. You know, that was another situation in which they went under a screen and there was no hedge there. Yeah, that's something that Kirsten Newman's taken advantage of several times, and you can bet SEC teams are scouting that here early. 
Davis at the high post. A little stagging here offensively from Tennessee when they're not running. Yeah, yeah. Pushkidawa underneath. Much stronger move this time, but misses it. Key's there to clean up the glass. But again, just a wasted dribble. You know, you, you just put that ball. If you're going to do anything, turn around and face the defense. Use that dribble to advance the ball. Sydney Pierce, a rare touch underneath, and she puts it in. Hey, she's not afraid out here. <laughs> she's playing well. She's blocking shots. She's getting established in great post position. Bird getting to the deck, but it's Kushkidawa that picks it up. Davis wants a three-pointer, and finally, Tennessee makes one from deep. Had been 0 of 8 prior to that one. That's a good sign for the Lady Ball. Davis last year, 37%, made 15 of them. Pierce was open underneath. Eagles settle for a three-pointer that Bird misses. Now Tennessee looks to run again. Stopping and popping green. That's been her game in transition, but misses this one. How about Burrell again? But Pierce there with Pierce the stuff. Again. Well, Renaya Davis was an honorable mention All-American a year ago for Tennessee. She's just getting started. The junior from Jacksonville lighting the lamp from long range. Tennessee has its tallest team ever, but here we are in midway through the third quarter talking about Carson Newman's size. Five blocks for CN, all from Sydney Pierce underneath. Five blocks. Now look at where she is. She doesn't give up there, keeps the hands raised high, comes down, blocks the shot. Conversely, the timeout happens. Her team rushes out to meet her, congratulates her, and they're as fired up as can be. You know, again, it's the small battles. It's the small victories. You've given up 46 points halfway through the third quarter to the Lady Vols on their home floor. Well, nobody came in here expecting Carson Newman to, to win this game or really probably even be within 25 at the end of the day. But here they are playing well and taking something out of this. And as you mentioned, I think at the end of the day for teams like Carson Newman that around the country are playing exhibition games, it's an opportunity to show if you can do it here, you're going to be able to do it on whatever level you play. You hit the nail right on the head. You know, playing in this atmosphere, playing on the summit, playing against girls that are much taller, much quicker, much faster, to be able to get those small victories. Little things become big things. Jordan Horston back into the game. She pulls the trigger on a jump shot. Been a little tough for her, one of seven from the field. The freshman and one of the best players in the country coming in, number two overall in the recruiting rankings. Carson Newman's four for nine from the field here in this third quarter. It's already scored nine points, more than double what they scored in the second quarter. You know, one of the things that's lacking for me, for the Lady Vols, especially here in this third quarter, is their lack of defensive intensity in, in terms of on-ball pressure. You know, uh, you would think that they're, you know, with their size and athleticism, they would close out. And, and look at this close out here. That's the example that I'm talking about. That's what the Lady Vols need. And it draws a foul, but that's okay. Well, that's one of the things that I think Kelly Harper was talking about. I think there's so many things that she wants to be able to implement, get done, make sure that the team's doing the right things. That, you know, some of this stuff is just going to be, here's a game footage of this. Here's something that I talked about in practice that you weren't doing in this game that eventually they'll get better. And here we are, back-to-back -back defensive pressures. It leads to fouls, but something you want to see. But something you want to see, something that you can look at on film. You know, I, I like the aggression right now. If they can keep this up and make Carson Newman set more screens, make Carson Newman take them farther away from the basket, I think it, it, it bodes well for the Lady Vols. Kayla Marisites gets in. A little slip through with a left-handed layup. That absolutely shouldn't happen. With the size that you've got, it shouldn't happen. It's an all-region player for Carson Newman a year ago, and now she has to defend Horston. Foul underneath, however, here on Pierce. 
you dribble drive all the way down through the heart of the defense. And you got girls stepping out of the way instead of taking a charge. It, it shouldn't happen. Well, Kelly Harper said that her teams have typically been known to take charges, and they want to celebrate that. Haven't seen one yet here tonight, however. Harrison Newman gets a steal. They're within 22 here, three and a half to go in the third quarter. Weichel trying to close the gap within 20, and Braylon Weichel hits 10 points for the freshman. Another shot with confidence. Now, again, this is one of those droughts that the Lady Balls have gone on. You know, who's the go-to scorer right here? Chris Newman has made five of his last six shots. Tennessee hasn't made a field goal in over two minutes. Rennie trying to close the gap on that. She misses it. And Carson Newman the rebound. Lady Eagles outscoring the Lady Falls 14-10 in the quarter. Nickel trying to set up the offense. Doesn't use the screen. Kelsey Marisites is jumpers. Too strong and the rebound to Lou Brown. That's good offense by the Lady Eagles. Very good offense. Orston the other way. I haven't really seen her open it up so far. And it's going to take some time. It really is. But we're stagnant right now. You know, look at what's happening on the floor. You got one person dribbling, you got four others standing. Orson trying to do it all by herself. Instead, Brown steps out for a jumper. She can shoot it out there. It was excellent from long range at her Washington State career. Marisite slicing, nice little stop and pop from Kayla Marisites. And that, I think you read, mentioned that earlier with Ray Burrell. Stop, gather yourself, let the defender fly by. Absolutely. Orston misses another jumper, and it's Kayla Marisites on the glass. Tennessee 5 for 16 from the floor in the quarter. It's been a tough night for Jordan Horst. It, it, it's, it's been a really tough night. Just needs to really let the game come to her, get something easy, perhaps get an offensive rebound and a putback. She's done a nice job defensively. A couple steals in that department, has a couple rebounds as well. Nice give and go there. Much better offense, but McCoy couldn't finish the layup. Yeah, got to finish those. Those are bunnies, man. You got to have those. Maybe a little frustration here from Tennessee, ahead by just 19 in the third quarter. Carson Newman once again running a little flex cut there, doing a nice job of setting off ball screens, making the Lady Vols work. Parasite's trying to do it by herself. Gear with one, puts it up, misses it too strong. Another good look. Carson Newman was 7 of 14 prior to that jumper in this quarter. Horston. Nice jump stop. There's the athleticism. She's a different level when she does that. Yeah, he's not knocking it down from the outside, beyond the arc. Let the game come to you. You know, gather yourself, get to the basket using your athleticism. Very slick move for Horston. Another high screen and roll, and it's Kalen White. Horstonman has probably gotten half of its points from that set. There's no hedge. You know, you, you've really got to step out and hedge and detour that ball handler. Final quarter minute here in the third. Shot clock's off. Tennessee can play for the final shot. McCoy dribbling baseline. It's pilfered by Marisites, then trickled through the legs of Brown. And with 6.6 .6 to go, Tennessee will maintain possession. It's a prime opportunity for Tennessee to draw something up. End the quarter situations are what can win and lose a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you look at this squad that's on the floor right now, and you got Saunders who doesn't have much experience. And who's your go-to player again? I think it's got to be something about Mass and Gill. And she does it all the way to the glass and a right-hand runner to close out the third quarter. But it's a quarter that Carson Newman outscores Tennessee. 18-16. It was Kayla Marisites that got things started with a little step through up and under. All region pick in her own right for Carson Newman. And it was Horston at the other end for Tennessee. Tennessee dance team and also we have our three-time national champion, Hall of Famer, Smokey Mesa.
Tennessee leads by 21 entering the fourth quarter, and Kelly Harper in her first season has a, a lot of shoes to fill. Avina Westbrook was the team's leading scorer a year ago. Sheridan Green averaged 9 and 8. Mimi Collins was an excellent role player, and Sheridan Green was fantastic as well. A lot of big shoes to fill. But even in that, you know, Michael, they still return roughly 47% of the scoring from last year. Big shoes to fill, but again, the cupboard is not bare. It's just a matter of developing this talent into what Coach Harper wants. Speaking of talent, Renaya Davis able to put one in 13 points for Davis at second highest on the team. Inside pass for Pierce. Double team comes, and then she's blocked. A little taste of her own medicine. It's okay, though. That's okay. You, you look at what she did. She caught the ball. She turned and faced the basket, tried to get up and under move. Unfortunately, it got blocked. Terrence Newman outscored Tennessee by two in the third quarter. Wilson dribbling to the right block. Puts up an errant shot. And the rebound to Harris. Haven't seen a lot of Tamara Harris tonight. Orson passes on a jumper, gets inside, right hand layup up and in. I think she's maturing before our very eyes. Was settling a lot earlier, now starting to be more aggressive. Yeah, yeah, you see where she really can be of an advantage for the Lady Vols by her link just getting to the basket at will. Traveling violation. Carson Newman hadn't turned the ball over in the second half until that. Yeah, you look at this kick out here. Don't settle for that three. Get to the basket. Utilize that talent. Utilize the skill. Rise up above someone and knock down the layup. It's going to be very few players that can stick with her in man-to-man -man defense this year. Orson will set up the offense. Let's look at what sets the Lady Rawls run right here. They get it inside. And another block from Pierce. I think Davis was losing it on the way up. Michael taking Horson to the block. Step through, travel. But she's not afraid. <laughs> you know, that's the biggest thing. You look at her, you know, she's of a diminutive stature, and she just takes it right to the heart of the defense. Braylon Michael leads Carson Newman with 12 points. The only player in double figures. First Carson Newman freshman to start game one in four years. Rennie in left wing, Australian native, kicks it over to Horston, and a foul underneath. Well, 8.20 to go. And if you're just tuning in, 25-point game, Tennessee shooting just 37%. But for the viewers at home just tuning in, what is your biggest takeaway from Kelly Harper so far? I think that her team right now has to have a go-to player. And much like last year, there is not that go-to player right now. Too many times that they're stagnant on offense, they go through, many, go through too many droughts. They need to have someone that can put the ball in the basket consistently. Well, Renaya Davis starting to show it a little bit there. Taking over offensively, she's 7 of 10 from the field. Griffin misses a jumper at the other end, and now Tennessee will look to push a little bit as Wilson takes it away from Davis. Great D. Weichel dumps it inside over the head of Griffin. She's able to retain possession, but the Lady Eagles nearly had a layup. That's great defense. Who's <laughs> Davis going to work? Nice step back. If, if she can do that, she can have a big time season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another missed jumper and then a foul underneath. A lot of the youngsters get in for the Lady Balls and get some important key moments like number 31, Emily Saunders. You know, you're looking for her right now to kind of get a feel for the game, get her feet wet. You know, not necessarily, they don't want her to be a scorer. They want her to be a, you know, block shot person. They want her to be a rebounder. So this is time that's very valuable for the youngsters. With been very balanced minutes. Nobody's played more than 18 for Tennessee. Pesky defense again, but Rennie steps open and finds Horston. Left corner, three-pointer. Misses that one. Offensive rebound, Davis. She sticks it back in. Yeah, right place, right time. But, you know, sometimes, Michael, it's just a matter of I want the ball more than you do. 
Thurston Newman misses a deep jumper. Now Horston. She tries to go one on two. Still has the basketball. No look pass. I thought we were going to see a moment of brilliance. And the Lady Eagles deflected it away. Good hustle nonetheless by Jordan. Six forty to go in the game. Tennessee ahead by twenty nine. Deep three pointer and Abby Wilson connects. Averages two points a game in six minutes last year. But she hits that. Hand down, man down. I've heard I've heard that said. Jordan came out, didn't close out with her hands up. That's an open look. At this level, these girls can knock that down. Davis, who's taken over here in the fourth quarter, has this one rattle out, and then Harris deflects it out of play. Substitutions coming for each side. And it brings us to a stoppage in play as Kelly Harper calls for time. Tennessee starting to get flowing here in the fourth quarter, leading it by 26 in the exhibition game. Tennessee ahead in Kelly Harper's Tennessee coaching debut, 60 to 34 here in the fourth quarter, and it's as you would expect another challenging slate for Tennessee. Look at that schedule. A couple top five teams in there, including that date at UConn. But the thing that really sticks out, they're going on the road for three or those four, and you will find out early with that November 11th date at the reigning runner-ups in Notre Dame. Yeah, you're going to find out a lot about your team very, very quickly. Uh, the maturity. Uh, you know, the who's going to have the deer in the headlights look, you know, when you go to Notre Dame or when you go to stores, Connecticut, you know, that's one that the Lady Ball fans have been circling for a long time. And you're about to see how your Lady Ball program matches up with the elites. Yeah, there are very few days for Tennessee to get loose for that one as Abby Wilson hits another one for Carson Newman. After this, ETSU on the road, Central Arkansas at home in the span of three days, and then boom. You're in South Bend to take on Notre Dame. Well, I got news for you. You better look out for that ETSU matchup up at East TSU. That, that's, uh, that's one of those games where, you know, you better circle the wagons because that place is going to be packed to get the Lady Vols there at their place. They better come with their boots strapped and ready to play. Tennessee's ahead by 23. It's been a comfortable lead pretty much from the outset. They were off and rolling early, scoring the first 12 of the game as Renaya Davis connects on another one. 20 points for Davis. Now this is a good looking three again. Feet are set, little jab step there, right into a rhythm jump shot. Well, Davis was an All-American a year ago, second team All-SEC last season. And I think that she's still got a higher ceiling than what she's letting on, 15 points, eight rebounds. You might not think that, but she might be able to go for a 20-10 and 10 type season. Well, they're going to need that from her this year. They're going to need that. She's going to have to step up and take on that role of just a leader and a force. Look at Horston with that big right hand, but Wilson deflects it away from her, stymieing the progress of the rookie. Horston gets it back, slips past Wilson and misses another layup. And now Tennessee will regather. Fans appreciate the hustle. Yeah, you know, they're going to really, she's going to be a crowd favorite because of what she can do, you know, getting to the basket at will. She's going to be a real crowd favorite. She certainly looks the part, despite the fact her stats aren't necessarily eye-popping. Davis, another triple. That shy had to shoot it with one on the shot clock. McCoy underneath able to stick one in. Six points for her. Those are the first post paint touches for a basket in a while for the Lady Vols. And they've been spending a lot more time on the perimeter as Goforth with a steal from Davis. 1v1. Goforth has her shot blocked and it goes out of bounds. <laughs> Well, Tennessee is shooting just 38% here tonight, but they are outscoring Carson Newman 40 to 14 in the paint and ahead by 28. to see the ball down here just rocking
Tennessee has been in control, scoring the first dozen points of tonight in the yearly exhibition. 16th straight year they take on Carson Newman. Around the country, a lot of big-time players around the country. Baylor, not only did they win the national championship last year, but they reload with Taya Cooper coming back. Sabrina Ionescu is back for Oregon, and you expect the Ducks to be one of the best teams in the country. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you, you get Taya Cooper. It's almost unfair to transfer in. You lose a, a big-time player, and you get her to transfer in from South Carolina. They're going to be loaded again. SEC didn't have a team in the Final Four last season first time since 2016 that happened back in 2016 there were three first time final four teams so that was the anomaly that that w that year was and tennessee's played much more of a defensive effort shooting just 38 percent in the game you know the thing you like about the lady eagles is that they have not gone away they have not quit you know they've, they've had a double digit deficit virtually the entire match but they haven't quit shot clock violation here 17 turnovers but just four after the break this is what you want to see here you close out hands up ready to block the shot it's great defense by ray burrell well in the 15 years prior to this of exhibition basketball tennessee has scored no fewer than 90 points that came back in 2014 90 57 win so unless there's a massive surge coming up, this will be the fewest points they've scored against Carson Newman. This is a series that dates back to 1920. That's when the scores were, you know, 14-13. Yeah, the football yeah. scores 23-7. So this is uh, it's been a long time since Tennessee struggled to score against the Carson Newman team. Well, we talked about this before, but Coach Mincy has to be very, very ecstatic about this. Sure, he's given up some offensive rebounds and second chance points, but the fact that, you know, the Lady Vols sit, sit here with 65 points, got to be very happy about that. Tennessee's also experimented a lot defensively. We've seen the zone a few times tonight. Don't expect to see it a bunch this season, but, you know, for these little possessions, can really frustrate a team. Wilson does miss the three. Tennessee three on three the other way. Green, nice step through. And she's fouled. And we'll get to the free throw line. Carson Newman's really getting some good looks. You know, aside from the first quarter uh, spurt uh, by the Lady Vols scoring 26 points, Carson Newman's really held him in check. And, and done a fantastic job defensively. Blocked some shots. Caused some turnovers. So it's the small things that you take away from a matchup like this. Since that first quarter, Tennessee outscoring Carson Newman just 39-28. Second foul shot from Green is good. Averaged over 10 points per game against the, the SEC last year. 14 double-digit scoring efforts. Bunch, a deep three-pointer for Carson Newman. Misses it too strong, but she will watch this one go out of bounds and a recycle of the shot clock for the Lady Eagles. You almost, if you're Carson Newman, you treat this as a glorified practice, you know. Uh, you utilize uh, your different skill sets. You really, really get your uh, your plays in. Uh, you get your terminology in. And you really see who's out there that can really go to work for you throughout the course of the regular season. We talked about Mike Mincy's big takeaways. Well, he lost 3,000-point scores from last year's team. What's your biggest takeaway from this team from an offensive perspective moving forward? You know, they've got to be able to spread the ball around. They set those high post screens. They run flex cut offense. They virtually get any shot that they want to get. It's a matter of knocking those shots down. Mincy calls for time here with gear locked up underneath the bucket. Saturday, we'll have another full slate of college football right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. We kick the day off at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, with Texas A&M hosting the University of Texas at San Antonio in College Station. Then it's Mississippi State taking on Arkansas in Fayetteville. Vandy's in Columbia to cap off the day against South Carolina at 7.30 Eastern in our SEC Saturday night matchup. on the tennis
seaside in terms of players. I think for Kelly Harper, some of those nerves, I think she can finally sit back and think, I've gotten that first game out of the way now. It, we did what we needed to do. We have some things to improve upon, some things to learn. But those nerves, the reminiscing, some of that uh, romance period of being back here, now aside, and she can focus on the season. Yeah, I think she'll sleep well tonight. You know, there were so many things going through her mind, all the stories and playing in, in, in this arena. And now coaches, coaching in this arena, uh, you know, she'll sleep well tonight. Um, tomorrow, hit the practice floor again and see if she can get better in certain aspects of the game. But it's overall a good, good matchup. It's a, it's a good test for the Lady ball. Push getaway, able to put the ball back in. You saw Tennessee's schedule there. That Notre Dame game, game number three, will be a big test for this Tennessee side. But it was Kelly Harper's team last year that started one and seven as Goforth sticks in a little teardrop. So she talks about teaching. She's a very patient teacher. So she's going to probably need to be with some of these newcomers on this roster, seven underclassmen. I mean, you look at the fact that they went over how they were going to come out of the locker room <laughs> today. You know, how they were going to sit on the bench and how they were going to pass towels to people coming on and off the floor. So very meticulous she is. Well, I, I liked at the very end of that as gear connects from long range for Carson Newman. She she was basically barking out. Say just hit a three pointer. Jazz just took a, a charge and it was like, what kind of celebrations are we going to do? Yeah. What kind of team are we going to be when we're not on the floor, when you're not one of the five playing those critical minutes? Set the bar high right now and they will achieve. They will ascend to those higher heights. Carson Newman down by 27 here in the final 90 seconds of action against Tennessee. 16th straight year these two teams have played an exhibition play. There's Carson Newman's schedule. They get a rematch of that NCAA tournament game against Lander in game two as they start next Friday. Gill leaking out, but she can't handle the pass, and then Wilson saves it. She's been all over the floor tonight. The one thing that we have not lacked this evening from any player that has reached the floor has been hustle. Yeah, yeah, you know, being outmatched, um, you know, Carson Newman, that's all they got. They really got to get up and down the floor, and again, they're not backing down. They're not quitting. That was a wide-open snowbird layup right there that was thwarted. Tennessee shooting just 37% in this game. I have some work to do offensively, but defensively they've done a very nice job. Kushkidawa loses the ball. Burrell picks it back up and is fouled. And foul shots coming here for Tennessee. Another talented recruiting class. Three straight years for Tennessee in the top ten recruiting classes. Five McDonald's All-Americans on this roster. But the question is, how will that translate once you play college basketball? Absolutely. You know, it means absolutely nothing when you look at the star rankings. It's, it's about actual play on the floor. Final 50 seconds of this one. Pierce, a little short jump shot. She connects. Got to be impressed with Sydney Pierce tonight. Four points, five blocks, however. That's big time. Here we go, Helter Skelter again. Have, have had this at times as Goforth has her pass intercepted by a hustling green. Burrell at the other end, stopping. There's what you wanted to see earlier with the jump stop. She missed the initial attempt. Get a jump ball, and with 20 seconds to go, Carson Newman should get our final possession with the shot clock turned off. Well, I think if you're Coach Harper, you, there's several things you can work on. Obviously, uh, they got to get in better shape for one. They got to get their bigs to be able to run it up and down the floor and and uh, hedge on screens and things of that nature, and got to be able to knock down easy looks as well. Well, some Tennessee fans, we talked about the high expectations here, might be scratching their head and saying, we, didn't we used to beat Curse Newman by 70, by 60? How do you explain to Tennessee fans what this Tennessee team this year is going to be like? Hey, look, it's a, a win is a win is a win. At the end of the day, it's 
the first exhibition. It's the first time that these Lady Balls have faced live matchups. And, 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 you know, sometimes it takes a while, and they're going to get there. Tennessee scores its fewest points in exhibition play against Carson Newman, but they control things here as they take down Carson Newman 70 to 44. Kelly Harper gets a win, gets that under her belt. I think for Tennessee, you're impressed with Renaya Davis. You like what you saw from Ray Burrell, but it's now going to be some of those complimentary players stepping up. And I think also you, you had several experimental lineups as well. You know, some of the ladies are not going to get extended playing time, and you'll see other ladies that will step up and get extended playing time. So it'll be a much different lady ball team the next time they hit the floor. Very balanced attack for Tennessee here tonight. And that puts a wrap on this evening. For my partner tonight, Steve Hamer, I'm Michael Watring as Tennessee takes down Carson Newman 70 to 44. This was a production of ESPN. Watch this entire game on replay. Go to the Watch ESPN app.